Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video we're going to be picking up with our advanced submarine here in the Great of Allen on advanced mode. So we're going to be continuing in part 5 of which I'm calling the detailing episode as you would call it. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding a couple new features. The first off is going to be our electrical system controls. So we're going to be passing our batteries all through our circuit breakers and our circuit breakers are going to go ahead and control different systems systems within the submarine itself. We're also going to be adding a refueling and recharging capability to the submarine itself simply by just adding two connectors to the top of the submarine towards the rear so we can actually go ahead and refuel it and recharge it. What we will do is that towards the end of the video is we'll actually spawn in a creation that we can do that with uh, from the workshop. And then along with that, we're also going to be doing a couple different things as far as painting. We'll be doing, um, I'll show you the new interior which I've built up using the same components from the last tutorial. Uh, we'll also be adding a couple diving suits to the submarine itself because obviously we're going to be submerged at some stage and we'll want to get in and out of the submarine to load cargo from the seabed, for example. Uh, and then a couple other features, but I'll be going through that. Uh, throughout the tutorial. So with that all said, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're back here in the workshop uh, or workbench. So first off, as you can tell, I've already gone and just done a little bit of detailing in the actual main compartment itself. I've pretty much taken all the controls that we had on the front panel here and I've made them into individual workstations. So first off, we have on the left here is going to be our panel, which is actually going to be controlling the ballast systems itself. We have two key switches to turn them on, two gauges to tell us how full they are, and then we have two pressure sensors connected to them. So I'll show you here. We've just gone ahead and connected a pressure sensor to the in, so it's going to tell us how much pressure is coming into the system itself. We then also have our indicator light here, which I've added between two videos. And this is pretty much what I've done. Is like all the custom doors, I've added locks to them now. So whenever they're locked, they're going to be sending an on signal, and that's just going to come to our indicator panel just over here to tell us, hey, listen, the door's locked and sealed. Great, thank you very much. We now know we can submerge without any water or fluid coming to the system. Next off, just an empty paint block, um, nine paint blocks joined together. Um, so we can go ahead and actually detail that up and make a little pretty screen here. Uh, we then also have is our controls for our diesel engine. So we have all our different fuel tanks. We have quite a few now. Uh, we also have our rotation, temperature, battery level, uh, starter motor, fuel pumps, exhaust pumps. And then I've added an indicator light here, which I'll tell you about later on. We then have a couple digital displays, uh, one for the altitude, one for our desired altitude with the systems here for the altitude. And then last, we have a speed sensor uh, or speed sensor connected to that digital display. We then have the electrical circuit breakers, which we will be talking about later on. Another blank screen, uh, a throttle to control our electric motor and then we also have our two indicator lights which we'll be talking on about later on uh, i won't get into detail about that now so that's it we'll go ahead and get started so the first thing we're going to be doing is adding our refueling and recharging connectors i'm going to be doing that just by putting it on the top of the system here um, by deleting this block and this block here so i'm making a gap within the system itself and then just being extending it out and then we're going to have our fuel here and then our electricity charge connector here and we don't need to add any valves or anything like that because obviously our, all our fuel tanks go into a pump before it goes to the engine so it is isolated if we didn't have the engine on so with that said we'll now go ahead quickly and just add the fuel connector and the electricity connector we actually don't need to add any uh, switches to these the reasoning behind that is that because they are on by default they will always be connected unless you want to switch them off, which we don't. We, we're happy to leave them on at the moment for the purpose of this tutorial. You can, as I said, go ahead and switch them off if you want. You also have outputs to actually have an indication of, excuse me, if they are connected or not. So we've gone ahead and done that. The next thing we're going to be doing is going back to this indicator light I was talking to you about earlier on. This indicator light is going to tell us if we have a low battery or not. So I'm just going to go right here, low battery. So how we do that is we take our value that comes from the battery itself. Because they all link together, we don't actually take, need to take each individual, individual one. We only need to take one because it's going to have the same charge as the rest of them. We're going to then take that. We're going to connect it over to a threshold gate, which is going to test that value. And that value, what I'm going to be doing is saying, for example, 
if it's between 0 and 0 0.3, for example, it's going to send an on signal. So that on signal is then going to go over to our indicator light and then indicate to us in the control system that we now have a low battery and we need to actually recharge or surface and turn our diesel engines on in order to get, uh, get more battery power. So with that done, we'll now start moving on to this, these two indicator lights here, which I have set up for our um, collision warning system. So we're going to go ahead and add that system in. The first thing we need to do is obviously just add two sensors. The first distance sensor is going to be there. And the second one I'm just going to put pretty much wherever I want underneath the submarine where I want to, to measure the distance. So we'll go ahead, grab our distance sensors. And as I have explained in a couple of the other tutorials how we set this up, once again, it's just by using our threshold gates. We take those two values, send them into threshold gates, which is going to then measure them. And if they're within a certain distance, which we can obviously configure, I'm just going to head quickly and just connect this while I'm chatting. Uh, so if they're within a certain value, um, so say they're within a value of, oops, I've gone ahead and deleted that block. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly just fix that. Yeah, it's one thing you need to be careful of is that sometimes you will actually by accident delete something that you need. So you just need to be careful about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace this block making sure I've got it the right way around. So let's move that distance sensor to here. Um, sorry, where was I? Um, so yeah, so we connect that up, um, just feeding it into the distance sensor, and if it's within a certain distance, it's then going to send a, a signal, and we can then collect that. But before we send that signal through, we're just going to be setting it up to a blinker. So that it will blink on and off and obviously you can go ahead in the settings of these and change them to how long you want. I'm going to set them to 0 0.5 for this tutorial. Finish connecting all this up. And then send these here. And then send them off to our two indicator lights. So that's going to be for our rear one. So take that away. Collision warning for the front and then our seabed warning depth. And then the setting we're going to use here to measure them is if they're within 50. I'm happy with 50. So anywhere between 0 and 50, it's going to give us an alarm. Pretty nice, pretty simple. Uh, you can also go ahead, for example, and just add to that system if you want. You could add buzzers. So you get an audible indication of it also. So just by adding those in and then just connect them, connecting them up in the same fashion. Fantastic, and then just making sure that all these systems have power. So, go ahead and just connect the power, even though we will go ahead and change this very shortly. Fantastic, so that system is all set up. So, now if it detects anything within 50 meters of the front or only 50 meters of the bottom of the submarine, it's going to go ahead and indicate us on these two lights and also tell us in um, these or give us an audible sound. Next thing we're going to be doing is setting up the electrical systems. Um, so as you can tell at the last tutorial, we took all the power directly from the battery to our different components. What we're going to be doing now is be taking that same power from our battery and connecting it to our different uh, electrical uh, circuit breakers. So the power goes in here, and then from there, the B then goes off to our different components. So if the switch is off, it won't be sending power to any of these components. So we're going to go and just set this all up now um, by deleting all what we've done in the last tutorial, and then sending them to the different components. You can see here, I've already gone ahead and named quite a few of them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you back when it's done. So we've gone ahead and connected all that up now. Uh, I wasn't going to spare you with the details of my lengthy ordeal of connecting that up. One thing to note um, is that we've gone ahead and only connected this top hatch here and the two buttons directly to the power. Obviously, because we won't otherwise we won't be able to get into the submarine itself to actually go and switch these on uh, if we were to connect to the circuit breaker itself. So now with that done, we can move on to the next part, um, which I'm just going to be doing a little bit of detailing work here. Now the detailing work I'm going to be doing is going to be adding um, some scuba gear to our submarine itself. I'm going to be placing three different parts. I'm going to place one up into the coning tower here, just for purpose sake. So we've got one placed over there, and then I'm going to go ahead and place another one, or actually I'm going to place another two, just over here inside our cargo bay area itself, so that if we ever do need... Um, our scuba gear, it's going to be inside here. I'm just going to try and find a nice place to put it where it looks half decent. 
There we go. So we have two scuba gears here, all nice and placed. And then next off, we're going to go ahead and just paint the whole submarine itself. It's actually going to take two seconds to paint. We just go over to our paint block because we paint everything in white. We can just go ahead over to our replace color. Click the color we want. For the first tutorial, I'm going to paint the, the submarine black. And that's pretty much about it. Our whole submarine has been painted. One thing to note, you just need to go ahead and double check your actual indicator lights just in case it's actually gone ahead and painted any of that. Uh, but I can, as you see, it looks like now everything seems to be fine and working. So once we have that done, uh, we'll actually, let me see what else we need to do. That's pretty much about it. Uh, I think what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and spawn the submarine itself and then we'll see if we can actually go ahead and refuel the submarine um, using one of the existing workshop creations and then we'll also test to make sure all our systems are actually working and functioning how they should do. So that's it. We'll go ahead and spawn everything in. So we've gone ahead and spawned our submarine back in. Uh, we'll go ahead and test that and just make sure everything's working and that we can burn off a little bit of fuel. And the reason why we're going to burn off a little bit of fuel is that we can go ahead and actually refuel it. Now I've downloaded one of the workshop creations, uh, which is called the Creative Island Fuel Tanks, if I'm correct. Um, so I'll show you it here. It's done by a creator called Cheap Dog. Um, really awesome creator, very high detail. He's done a lot of base... Um, Spawners, um, so really quite nice. He has this and then also a couple of other things. Um, huge in detail, highly recommend for anyone that wants to go ahead and refill any of their creations in advanced mode. This has got pretty much everything you need on it uh, and it's highly detailed, really quite nice. So as that said, uh, we'll quickly now just jump into our submarine itself uh, and then just make sure all our systems are working. So as you can see, our hatch is open because that's the only thing that does have power. But if I'm trying to open any of these other hatches, nothing is working. Uh, and then you can see I can't actually turn any of these on because they have no power. So go ahead, give everything power. See here now our doors have opened because we've given it power. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll just get our engine started. You can see our warning for our depth because obviously it's got the dock beneath us. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start our fuel pumps, start our exhaust pumps, start our engines up. Get that going and we'll, you'll start seeing our fuel tanks should start to going down. So this was just above 70 when we started, so we'll know that once we get over 70 when we're refueling it, it, it is 100% working. So you can see we're burning off our fuel now. I'm just going to go ahead and actually just drive this a little bit forward. And we'll get into position of refueling it. I'm not sure if he's got a electrical charging port on the stock or not, um, but we'll, for the moment we'll just go ahead and actually just refuel the fuel tanks themselves. So we'll just line up here with the dock itself. Once we have that done, what we can do is go ahead and actually just turn off our engines. So I'm just going to go cut power to that and that. You can see here now our fuel has shot up on a few of them, but it's lower on a couple of the other ones. So we just want to get all of these back up to full full capacity. So what we'll do is we'll quickly just jump out of the submarine itself just by using our main top hatch here. And we'll jump over to the actual fuel dock itself. I'm going to go, let's see, what do we want to pump? We want diesel, which is over here. We'll extend the hose out, pump diesel, oh, hopefully that should be working, we'll go ahead and grab this, see if we can't pick it up and connect it to our submarine. So there we go, it's connected, I should start pumping diesel through, so we'll go inside our submarine now and just double check that we have our tanks are full. And there we go. Everything is now 100% full. We've now refilled it fully. We'll go ahead and just disconnect this. And these are actually quite nice now. You can actually just grab these and pull them. Or well, you should be able to at least. There we go. And now you can just disconnect it. And there we go. There's our fuel disconnected. We can now jump back into our submarine. Close the main hatch and then test our diving systems, make sure that's working. So I'm going to hit the dive. So our ballast tanks are going to start filling. I'm going to enable our auto depth system, tell it to go to negative five to start with. Engine's off, we don't need it as our battery is full at the moment. So we'll go ahead and start setting off and seeing 
if our submarine will start to dive. So our ballast tanks are still filling up. You can slowly start seeing them to fill up. All our hatches are closed. That's the purpose of those indicator lights there. So we know everything's sealed, which is great. And we should start diving now. And you can see the auto depth system is now maintaining us at a great altitude, which is perfect. And then let's check. You can still see it's measuring something below us, which is perfect. As soon as we get into deeper water, that alarm should go away. And we can actually just set up our also cruise control so we can turn that on. And then we can put throttle to full and you can see now it's automatically going to go at full speed. And we can obviously go ahead and turn if we want it to turn and so on and so forth. I think at one stage I uh, will add a autopilot system, but it's not, not going to be in this video. Um, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here, guys. And yeah, that's pretty much everything working for us now. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I like the way it's turned out. Needs a couple of more things added to it, but um, I think as an overall board build, it's quite good. Um, as always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it uh, and found it somewhat informative and useful as always. Um, don't forget, um, I'm going to be doing a couple of different videos coming up with uh, future builds. So what I'm thinking of doing is going ahead and actually starting a a showcase build. So once a month or once a week, we'll go ahead and grab the top five videos or top, sorry, top five um, workshop submissions for the week. Uh, and we'll quickly go and review them and have a look at them and see how they work. Uh, and just do like an in-depth look at each one of the things. Uh, if you think that's a good idea, please comment below um, and let me know. I'm obviously always open to up to new suggestions and so on and so forth. And as always, if you are enjoying these videos and you feel like you want to give me something a little bit just to help the videos go along and obviously help towards doing this full time, please go ahead and uh, have a look at my Patreon page. And always don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for any future content. And we'll see you in the next video.